Today we're going to talk about simplifying trees. Trees are probably the, the uh, biggest part of a landscape and they're probably the most detailed looking with the foliage, small branches, so we want to be able to see trees as an element of design, which means larger shapes that makes up the composition. So simplifying, but still keeping that sense of light and dark uh, and a, a sense of detail without overdoing it. Now in this lesson we're going to be talking about simplifying trees, in particular groups of trees as opposed to just uh, individual trees. But even then with individual trees we want to see a simple shape or pattern. I mean, it's just generally we have more than just one tree involved. So when we take something complicated like this scene here, this is in Teton mountain range, I want to simplify things just to make a read easier so when the viewer sees it it doesn't look like this. I don't want to reproduce the photograph because it's way too busy. So if I can find bigger patterns of dark and light, so if I look at this and trees are upright anyway, so what I'm looking for, in this case, in this one, I'm going to separate the darks and the lights and create shapes with each one that I think works better than maybe the photograph does. Some of this, you know, gets a little choppy and busy, but if I pull it together, and again, a simpler pattern of dark and light, not worried about little darks and lights, even though I left a little bit of a light there. This is how I want to see it, and this is how I want the painting to read at first. Now, I need to separate the value between the dark on the upright trees and the dark on the flat plane. They won't be the same, but just for simplifying purposes. I also might want to change the shape of this tree. And I can change it by just, again, changing the shape of the dark and or using the background, sky holes, background uh, mountains showing through to uh, make things read better. Now this is in shadow too. So forcing everything in the shadow in there. Now later in the paint I can come back with a darker dark and get you know darker accent. There's some darker darks looking way down in the middle of the trees. They so always have generally two values of dark, two values of light, but for our purposes here the main one is just that big simple dark, the big simple light. So if I can find that and create shapes in here that work in the painting maybe better than the photograph does. And I'm eliminating all the detail of trunks, branches. Now I have that simple pattern of dark and light, the foreground trees being darker, background lighter. And then use, you know, I can change those shapes slightly and use sky holes in here. Now I want to simplify the sky holes compared to the way they're used in the photograph. So if I see 40 sky holes in this area, I might put six or seven. So reduce the amount of little things like this that are detail oriented. But it does shape up the trees more. And this is easier to look at and see what it's doing. If I get the shadow on the water here. It really separates. And I'm looking at bigger shapes now. And I can change the pattern of these trees any way I want to. So if I'm, um, as I'm filling them in, either in a, in a thumbnail sketch or even right on the canvas, if I'm just going to start drawing, I might want to maybe lift some trees up, maybe break that plane of the mountain. You know, so I can change the shapes around, create better composition in there. So don't hesitate. Simplify. And in that pattern or grouping of dark and light on the trees, change the shapes. And the shapes can also be changed by, again, the negative, the background mountains, the, the background sky. And moving on to another one here. And here I just want to simplify from background to foreground, but again, change the shape wherever I need. I can use the background trees, dark trees, to cut into this aspen. I'll break that up, but if I can simplify the values to one, maybe two, because there's some sunlight in the background, but showing the sunlight back in here is not nearly as important as making this background group of trees 
dark and cutting in again more than what I see or less you know just again to create a better composition of how I want to break up these foreground shrubbery and I can get rid of some of the foreground create a bit of a hole there where you're looking back now those lighter trees in front stand out more and I could for the sake of color change the color slightly still kind of a yellow green I could make them yellow or yellow orange even push this a bit more towards fall using brush strokes that suggest kind of the not real dense foliage I mean it's somewhat dense because some areas you don't see through it but I want again shapes these aspens that are more uneven in other words, I don't want everything symmetrical looking, so I can design the aspens how I want to. Maybe heavier on the left side, and then not so much on the on the right side. Again, putting these where I want, but redesigning shapes, simplifying values, and again using darks to make things pop a little bit more if I want to fallen branch here to stick out. I can just create more shadow. And using that negative space for contrast. Background against foreground, dark against light. And that pops a bit more, mainly because I've simplified these shapes in the background. Created more contrast between the foreground trees and the background trees. And um, created a pattern that might look a bit more pleasing than what the photograph gives me. So think through those things. Same thing here. This one's a little easier as far as being set up a little bit better. You can see the dark shadow falling across here. But again, I can change this pattern if I want to fill up the sky more with trees rather than just blue sky. I can make this pattern a little bit bigger. You can come back and make the lights a little bit bigger or smaller. So don't hesitate to change things. Even this side here, I could break this up more. It's a bit too solid on the on the right side. I could use a little bit of sky. And again, keep sky holes bigger and simpler. But I can decide to cut in here and get rid of a lot of the foliage. Yeah, I might even just get rid of a whole bunch and leave a little bit of the trees down at the bottom or a little bit of a trunk to connect them here. But look at shadow patterns, shadow shapes on the trees, bigger, simpler. Uh, some examples here. This is um, William Went, and you can see the pattern he has here. He's creating his own pattern design of trees with this shape Simple light, simple dark, not much to it other than that, but the contrast is there. And the trees are easier to read, to look at, because he has them simplified quite a bit. Even the pine trees here, instead of just a Christmas tree, using the background to cut in in here so that you have, again, an irregular shape as opposed to just your standard Christmas tree looking tree. And it's easy to fall into that because a lot of them just look that way. But you, again, you want to create patterns that work a little bit better to make a better painting. So another one here from, that was William Went. This is Marion Watchtel. She was a early California Impressionist. But you can see how simple she gets this pattern of the trees, even on the right side here. It's just a simple shape. And uh, using sky holes to break up the big, simple shape of the trees. But it reads so much easier. You can see a lot more in it because she doesn't clutter it up with detail. And keeps the values simple, shape simple. And it's just a lot easier to look at. This is uh, E. Martin Hennings. That's H-E-N-N-I-N-G-S. And he was an early Taos painter. And you can see how he treats the, these, the foliage in the trees anyway. The dark yellow here. There's a definite shape and pattern of that dark yellow and then the lighter yellow and really keeps them separate and creates a shape and pattern that's easy to look at and creates a good composition. I doubt any of these trees were like what they were looking at. 
whether they paint them outside or in the studio. I think all of these, uh, they've changed the shape, simplified it, and using the background to break up the shapes and create a better, better composition.